Hi, I'm Tony with TA Custom Graphics and Woodworks. Today I'm going to take my old Craftsman rip fence. I'm going to beef it up, including a T-Track. Uh, hopefully you'll stick around and see how the whole thing turns out. So today I want to take my almost antique it even still says Sears and Roebuck on this model craftsman table saw, 10 inch, three inch uh, saw here. I wanna upgrade my rip fence. Um, I did a minor upgrade earlier this summer and that's what I came up with. It does a good job, but after watching several other upgraded rip fences on YouTube, um, I think I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to extend the length of the fence. I'm going to extend the width of the fence. That's the plan for today. Let me uh, get our materials and we'll get started. All right, so the length of the strips that I'm gonna make are, I'm gonna make each one 26 inches. This is 28. I may just leave it at 28. Uh, I'm going to cut it, the height of these strips, at 6 inches. Okay, so this was actually assembled using brad nails and wood glue, so I don't even know that I will be able to get it apart and salvage it. Uh, Definitely something to be said for wood glue and bread nails. This thing does not seem to be budging. Can't take it apart, let's rip it apart. And here is simply to run this mid-grade fence, rip off this little lip right here, and then the next stage will be to, we'll see. Hang on, let's take this one step at a time. That worked pretty well. Got a little bit of burning here, but I'll sand that, take that off. Uh, the next thing I would like to be able to do is I wanna try to salvage this center section right here. So I'm going to rip off this lip next. Let me uh, adjust the fence. All right, so I did manage to get it apart and this is what I was wanting to happen here. Hold that channel on there. Need a little more sanding there to align that piece. Making baby steps of getting this thing together. All right, got a spacer here. This is just uh, pre-drilled to fit over these two screw caps. Got one more spacer, outside panel, inside panel. Okay. We'll start the glue up process. We'll work from the inside to the outside. First step. Don't need a lot of glue here. Uh, basically what I'm gonna do is just enough to hold it in place. I probably need more than this, but uh, I'm gonna shoot a couple brad nails into it as well. Again, using this block as a spacer, I'm going to flip this one over, line these two front corners there. Basically, I made that pencil line. I want to keep the glue below that line. The inside of the existing rip fence or the original rip fence has got these three holes in it. I've already checked the cam rod runs across the top of it. So what I'm going to do to help secure this is I'm going to drill through each of those holes and countersink on this piece so that whatever bolt I use will be recessed behind there. Uh, I'm going to drill through these two holes here. To hold it in place, we need some clamps. Trying to 
fish for the hole on the bottom there is what I'm doing. Now I'm going to take the outside board, line it up the front face. Move over to the drill press and drill a small recess with a Forstner bit. Okay, so I've gone ahead and loaded up a half inch Forstner bit here. Uh, this is just going to recess into the inside panel here to hide the bolt head. Go ahead and get this thing lined up. Now I'll uh, run a line of glue down the inside of the center spacer here, Brad nailed that across, and then for the additional support, I'm um, going to cut a strip lastly to fit it down the length, and glue and Brad nail that in. This off cut. And we put our glue in that seam. Again, I'm not going to use a lot of glue because you know, I am using the brad nails here. Okay. All right, leaving just a little bit of room for some expansion. I've got three inches on this end. Branches on both ends. The good friction fit. I think I'm actually going to skip glue here and just simply put some brad nails on each side of this board to hold it in place. Pretty happy with that fit. Looks a little better. Definitely beefier. I got ahead of myself. I should have rounded these over prior to attaching everything. So I'm going to use the orbital sander just to soften these corners up right here a little bit. Last thing I'm going to do is flip it off, wipe it down, and then apply a pretty healthy coat of paste wax. Actually, I think I'll sand this too real quick and then uh, give it a healthy coat of paste wax and then wax, wax on, the surface here. wax off. That should help everything slide better. Let's Well, definitely not a saw stop. It will work for me for the time being. Maybe I can make it up to the big boy leagues one of these days. Anyway, I hope you uh, liked this video. I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. I try to get content out about every other week if I can. And uh, hope to see you back soon. Thank you. Have a great day. So in my haste to assemble the fence here, I neglected to route uh, dado in a channel to put in my t-track so i'm gonna have to route it in uh, i can't do it on the table router table because of this lip here i've already secured this panel and so i can't ride it along so i'm gonna have to use my trim router and route that in now that's fine on this end i can uh, create a guide to run it along you can clamp this in with no problem, but there's nowhere to clamp down here. 
So I'm going to use the blue tape and CA glue method. So let me go ahead and I've seen this method used many times. This will really be the first time I've done it in this kind of process. But it always seems to work for everyone else. Just cross my fingers that it'll work for me. Right. Got a little CA glue on this side. This uh, this an activator. Put a little pressure on there for about five seconds. Should be good. Looks like that's gonna work fine. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a clamp down here on this end. This is going to be the T channel that will go on here. This channel from Rockler. It is going to be a little bit short. I do believe I've got some cutoffs I can probably fill in that in extra space with. Um, Three quarter inch width, half inch depth. I've already gone ahead and set up my trim router for those dimensions. Let me go ahead and uh, run this across there and we'll get that channel cut. Dry fit. It's a good snug fit. Really, I probably don't need anything down here simply because the actual fence is this long. This is the overhang extension. This area to approximately here to here is the area I want to take care of. So let me uh, get the screws. I'll go ahead and get that attached in there. All right, so after doing a quick check, I did realize that those are gonna punch, these screws would punch through on the back side. So uh, I took these over to the grinder and just uh, ground the tips off after pre-drilling the holes. Go ahead and get the T-Track is anchored in place. Let me take it back over here to the table saw and I'll show you why I use this T-Track. So basically I just like to use T-Track. Don't know that this will have a whole lot of reasons to be used. Uh, the one I can think of that I've used most frequently was because I had a piece that I was cross cutting and it got bound against the fence and basically put a lot of pressure on the blade and caused kickback. So you could use this piece, T-Track, put your spacer block in here okay. anchor your fence down this one's not necessary there okay. slide it over slide your piece right up to that stop and then just to help prevent instead of this board riding against the fence being tight against the blade to possibly cause the kickback you're going to rest against the spacer block that you have anchored in using your T-Track. That's the spacer block, eliminating the tension between the blade and the fence for less kick, chance of a kickback. I'm sure there's other reasons. If you can think of them, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. Um, again, I, I like using T-Tracks. It may just be me. It may be on here and I may never use it, but at least if I do need to use it, it's there. Well, I hope you liked this video. I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. Uh, I'm going to try to be putting out videos at least every other week and uh, hope to see you back soon. Thank you.